so what the biggest thing is you learned about women in prison from doing Orange is the New Black? Um, uh, that's a good question. I think the biggest thing I learned was that um, usually when there's someone who is you know, incarcerated, immediately you think they're a terrible person. You're like, oh my God, they did terrible things and that's why they're incarcerated. Um, and sometimes that is the case, but other times there's situations that happen where it was just like a terrible mistake or, you know, like you look at Yoga Jones and she, you know, ends it up on the show. She ends up killing this child, but it was totally an accident. And who does she play? And she plays, um, so her name is Constance. So she plays Yoga Jones. Who's like the, she's like the, oh, yoga right. that's, right. Yes. that's right. And she ended up killing this child and it was a total accident. Or you take someone like tasty who we were talking about Danielle and her character actually got out and couldn't hack yeah. it mm-hmm. and did want it to get back in. Right. So it's like, you know, during the first season we had this one liner which was every sentence has a story and we really hold true to that and we tell these people stories and you really get to understand like they're not just inmates they're these women and they have lives and you know uh, a sense of family and love and sisterhood and it's awesome did you go to prison or talk to inmates to actually prepare for the role yeah and the thing that was cool was that Piper's book helped all of us a lot Um, even though my character was very different from the you know real Alex or whatever Mm -hmm. but um we went Taylor and I actually we were filming at a maximum this was a little crazy we were Mm -hmm. filming at a maximum security prison and over all the windows was they taped brown paper over all the windows on the side that we were shooting on and in between a take we went over and we like peeled up the paper and we looked over and it was like full-on Oz like wow. TV show Oz, all these men living in the Whoa. common area. We could see all them in their cell. And because really? our show is in maximum security. So being in a maximum security prison, you're just like, oh my God, this is crazy. And you're watching it like live. And then we covered it back up and we're like, oh my God, this, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be <laughs> looking at this. This is very odd. And, uh, and we wanted to like respect their space, you know, and we're like, holy crap. But um, it was, it was a little crazy. That definitely put things into perspective for I'm sure. sure. Gwyneth Paltrow and Salma Hayek and everybody's talking about bone broth now. I mean, I've been doing it for years. Elizabeth's been doing it for even longer. And there's like this woman, her name's Sally Fallon. She's like the Yoda, the, like the all wise Yoda of bone broth. <laughs> she's awesome. And she's had books about bone broth out forever. Okay. Um, and, but it, Kobe Bryant hurt his, I think it was his ankle or something, or maybe it was his, his knee, meniscus yeah. maybe. And his nutritionist called the hotel and was like, you need to make him bone broth and you need to bring it up to his room for him. And there was an article written about it. And then all of a sudden, all these athletes were like, oh, Kobe's doing bone broth. We got to do it. <laughs> but the whole reason is because you take these bones, you cook them down for hours to extract these nutrients and these minerals. And if, you know, Sally Fallon says, you know, it's like like feeds like. So you have these bones, you cook them down, you have the collagen, the cartilage, the bone marrow, mm-hmm. and all that literally replaces. Whose bones are these, by the, the way? Co- <laughs> Oh, you, you didn't mention you, you have to murder some someone gr- first. No, you don't have to murder anybody. Um, some, you know, grass-fed cows. You okay. know, your local yeah. butcher. You go there and get right, some good. bones. All right, cool. Um, it's not very mysterious where all these bones are from. Like, yeah, where are you yeah. getting these? Yeah, I was going to say you can ask your butcher for bones. Oh, girl, oh, yeah. every butcher has. And now, like, and also, you guys have Brodo here, which is like this awesome restaurant that's like all broth hmm. down on the Lower East Side. Really? Oh yeah, totally. Is it filling? Um. It- I mean, it depends. Like, I eat, I drink mine with meals. Okay. It's just part of my daily routine now, so I don't even really think about oh. it. I just picture this barren restaurant, and you only get broth. Oh, no, like, girl. Hungry just thinking girl, about there's it. lines around the block. Like, New Yorkers go there, what? they get a coffee cup full of broth, mm-hmm. wow. and there's a line around the block. Or even, like, you get the appetizer, like, bone marrow, and I've seen people, like, sucking the bone dry oh. just to get all the marrow out. I've oh, never, hell yeah. I've, tr- I've wanted to venture in to try it, and I've, I've been fascinated by people that eat it, but, yeah, a lot of people... Wait, have, have you done no, that, No, even, Laura? like, back in the day, like, um... I think it was like Queen Victoria would sit there and like smear it on her toast, toast and yeah. soldiers would eat it before they go out off to battle. Yeah. Like, cause it literally heals you and nourishes you. It, um, the cartilage for your joints. And that's why athletes love it. Cartilage for your joints. And also the collagen women love it. Cause okay. you know, the collagen are sure. Face and and everything. <laughs> but collagen older, is yeah. all over your body. You know I mean? Think about it. But when you put it that cartilage, way, I'm bones and, and suck collagen. out of a bone. <laughs> <laughs> so, no I don't collagen. eat the marrow. I just, cook the soup and I cook mm-hmm. everything with it like the brown rice I cook with it any protein okay. I cook I cook it with bone broth everything oh. it's like the center of all of my cooking that's cool yeah and now all my friends do it they all have like crock pots and they have bone broth parties <laughs> seriously <laughs> yeah. totally I always have broth a lot of the people on uh, online that wanted to ask you a question it's like the same question and I feel like you doing these radio you know interviews back to back to back you're gonna get asked this question all day long I don't long. care it's totally fine but is, are you 
are you gay? Are you straight? Was what everybody asks. Like, do you really like kissing women? Did you not like kissing everybody women? Everybody asks, am I gay or am I straight? That's what everyone wants to know. Oh, that's so funny. Isn't that interesting? But mm. I feel like everybody like, knows you, the really answer into, to that question. Like, are you really into girls? Was what a lot of people were saying. I mean, it, I'm straight. You know, yeah. um, but that's not a bad thing, by the way. The way yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Sure. <laughs> uh, um, but it doesn't matter what I say anyway, because a lot of people are yeah. going to think I'm a lesbian regardless. It doesn't matter, right? Because um, I have a deep voice and I play poker and I watch UFC. <laughs> I must be a lesbian, obviously, obviously a lesbian. And I have a motorcycle, so people are like you're definitely a lesbian. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, whatever. But um, what I will say is, our fan base is so incredible. And they're so supportive. It's just, it's awesome. But, um, but yes, I am straight. Um, and doing the scenes with Taylor are like no big deal. Who plays like, Piper? Who plays Piper? Um, from the first scene we had together. I mean, the first scene we ever shot together, we were naked in a shower together. So yeah, first season <laughs> one. Hot. That was like our first scene we ever did together. Yeah. So it's like, hey, cool, nice to see you again. Let's uh, let's get naked. Wait, did you have any um, time before that though together, or was it just we, like the first... only when we were auditioning? Oh. And um, I was gonna say that's a nice icebreaker. Like, yeah, hey. we we jumped right in. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, but we were so comfortable with each other. We, even in the in, even in the audition, we had to do a scene where, um, in the I don't know if you guys remember, but in the end of the pilot, there's a scene where she's in, can't find her luggage at the airport, mm-hmm. and I tell her, oh yeah, yeah. And, oh there's a scene where I'm kind of manipulating her into doing this, taking the you drugs know what I mean, and, and I'm like, yeah. I'll meet you, mm-hmm. you know, in Berlin, and everything's gonna be fine, and I kind of like seduce her. That was one of the scenes we did in the audition. And then, um, and even in the audition, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my hands here and put my hands here. She's like, yeah, do whatever you want. Like, we were totally comfortable. Cool. And um, it's awesome. I mean, it's just like, as long as you're comfortable, whether it's a guy or a girl, it doesn't matter. I know. I was going to say, I think the pe- the reason people ask is that maybe they don't know a lot about it, your personal life. They've right. only seen. Well, because I'm private Black. about my personal yeah. life. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And then you see the chemistry between you and Piper, you know, right. Taylor's character is so palpable. You guys have this right. great chemistry. So it's like, wow, they, she obviously must be into girls in real life. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because it's that chemistry that you're talking about is this thing that it's like this X factor where sometimes it's either there mm. or it's not. And I've worked with... Um, you know, different other co-stars where it's not there and you're just like, oh man, mm-hmm. what the hell am I going to do? And then, you know, with Taylor, it's just there. And then, you know, other guys I worked with, it's just there. So it's like, you can never tell. You never know until you're there and it's happening. And it's just, it's why some movies, you just fall in love with the couple and you're like, oh my right. God. And other times you're like, I don't buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so who's a better kisser? Is it Taylor from Orange is the New Black or Eric from that 70s show? Oh, man. <laughs> Topher would kill me, but I'm going to say Taylor. <laughs> so what's the etiquette, by the way? Do you do gum, mouthwash before kissing scenes? What do you guys usually do? I'm dying to well, know about that stuff. You know what's so funny is I did um, an episode of Castle. Yeah, this is from, reminding me of this. Yeah. I did an episode of Castle where I played Nikki Heat. And um, Nathan Fillion, who plays Castle, in the show, he wrote this book. And Nikki Heat's like the lead of his books or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I played Nikki Heat. And I had to do a scene where I kissed him in an elevator. And right, and I didn't know we were shooting that scene next. And I love peanut butter filled pretzels. I just oh, love them. I crack. love Those them. I don't good. know why. I love good. them. Um, uh, this is before I realized I was totally gluten intolerant, by the way. <laughs> and I'm at the craft service table and I'm like eating peanut butter pretzels. And then they're like, Laura, you got to go shoot the scene with Nathan. And I'm like, oh crap. I didn't realize that was right now. Okay. So I ran to the elevator. We did the scene and he's like, were you eating peanut butter pretzels? And I'm like, yes, I was. <laughs> and then right when I wrapped, he bought me this Costco size, like, jar of peanut butter pretzels. And he was like, this Aww. is so every co-star will know what I had to go through. <laughs> That's but so no, cute. it was so funny. But um, Do you ever, like, if you don't like the person you're working with, do you eat something like jalapenos or no, something just no. wretched and smell? No, normally you're very respectful. You know, uh, you respect your co-star and you're, normally, and you're nice but... about that normally. But I've never had... <laughs> I've been really fortunate. I've always worked with people who who were really great, so I never really had to trick them. Had, or had them to that worry way. about that. So is it gum mouthwash? I need to know what is it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're, I need to, up, we're Just, big on Listerine strips. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Those punch you right in the face. Those with are freshness, incredible. Don't they? Yeah, those are good. Um, you sound big. Like, do they have like jars of it on the set that everyone just yeah, pops in their mouth? Yeah, every makeup bag. There's a little thing of mystery yep. Listerine strips oh. every time. So we're big on those. Um, I think Taylor likes gum. Every actor has their own thing. Yeah. I like the strips because they're easy. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their thing. Some dissolve. people like the spray. Yeah. Okay. And they dissolve. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to yeah. spit your gum at it. It's a I whole situation. Yeah. Smart. 